Hey guys, it's Doombreaker again and I'm here with another tutorial for you guys. This time we are going to make a stopwatch and not just a normal stopwatch but one that can lock the time. So round 1, round 2, round 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so forth. Because I have a lot to cover, I already made the code. I'm going to put the code in the description in a link. So you can click that, paste it and you're done. But I'm going to explain what you just pasted because if you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of a waste of time. So I put in a label one, list box one, button one called start. Well, not called start, but the text is start. It's still button one. Button two, which is stop. Button three, which is round. And then a timer set to an interval of 100. So default time, you don't have to change anything. Then in the code, below public class form 1, we are going to define 5 variables, all integers, uh, rounds, hundreds, seconds, minutes and hours. Okay. Then in button 1, which is the start one, we are going to reset everything. So if you press stop and you already ran the, the thing, the stopwatch, you are going to set everything to zero again so you can just start over and count so we are going to say listbox one dot items dot clear so it's going to clear everything that's going to be in the list box then rounds is going to be zero same with hundreds seconds minutes and hours the label one dot text is going to be zero colon zero colon zero colon zero just default setting, you can set that to something else, but I just personally like this one. Then we're going to say timer1.start. In the button 3, which is the round one, we are going to say rounds is equal to the amount of rounds plus 1. So if it's 4, it's going to be 5. If it's 5, it's going to become 6. And we are going to add an item to the list box which is round space the amount of rounds and a colon followed by some spaces you can also choose to not get spaces here but I personally like some spaces and then label one dot text so what's in here which is going to be the current time and replace the colon with a space colon space so just to make it a little more neat, you can also just remove everything here and it's going to just display the text which is here. Just some personal stuff. And of course in the stop button we are just going to put timer one dot stop. But now the timer one, it's a little more difficult. So every time the timer ticks, you're going to say that hundreds is hundreds plus one. So because the interval is a hundred, which is a um, hundred, uh, we can say that hundreds is hundreds plus one. Then for the seconds, minutes and hours, we are going to say if hundreds is 10, seconds is going to be seconds plus one. And hundreds is going to become zero again so we can start over same with seconds but this time 60 because 60 seconds is one minute minutes plus one seconds is going to be zero again if minutes is 60 it's an hour so hours is hours plus one minutes is zero and then label one dot text so this text here is going to be the hours colon the minutes colon the seconds colon and the hundreds and then you have all you need but I have to say that if we click start it's going to count you can see everything works fine but it is not as accurate as you will think so it's not a hundred 
it's not a second like it should be that's because um, everything that is happening here is basically happening in the same thread uh, what the thread is I'm going to explain it later in another tutorial and you can fix all this with multi-threading I'm going to cover multi-threading in about two weeks I hope if I'm able to do it and uh, you will see it will work like a charm so um, that's it guys uh, I hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe to me like the video if you enjoyed it uh, I see you guys next week bye